Hi, my name is Michael Naranjo and welcome to Real Music Works. I'm going to talk about my second album, which is called Michael Naranjo, Turning Point. At this particular point, it was between 1998 and 1999 that, the, that I got the call back from the record label that I could come and record the second album. I was super excited. I really had more demos put together. So from Malmesbury, I made my way to the airport, boom, went all the way back up north to Johannesburg, uh, spent some time with, with the, the music producer. At this point, i got to admit, and I have to be honest, and as we go along, I'm going to mention some mistakes I made. So the first thing I did was I became super and overconfident. It's the worst thing you can do. At that particular point in my life, I had opened up for a band called Petra, received a, um, an award nomination for, for, for the album. It was on high rotation on 5FM. I mean, I was just 17 years old from Malmesbury and I hadn't even like really come out of school yet. So I ended up um, back in the studio, um, but this time I found myself singing a lot of other people's songs. I guess that was my first experience of having the cover experience. And singing other people's songs, I can actually tell you that it's it's difficult because you have to emote other people's emotions. It's kind of climbing into their character. It's 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 the the uh, I would call it the audio actor of cinema. You know, the, the audio uh, actor of cinema basically you you inhabiting that character and it's not you, so you have to interpret you know, your interpretation, but somebody else's you know character. So. That was very difficult in the beginning for me. So I, I, read, I did rehearse again, speech therapy. I mean, this, we're talking about a year later and I was still struggling. So it was an Afrikaans at school, English on the playground, uh, uh, Spanish at home. My dad spoke to me always in Spanish, even though he could speak a bit of English, a uh, bit, bit of broken English, but my mother uh, used to swing in English and she used to get upset. So uh, when she got upset, really upset, it was in Spanish. So I got a lot of that. So th there was all this, you know, phrasing and, and vanity law happening that I couldn't, you know, I had to like learn how to speak properly. I, I mean, I've got to be honest, I, I thought at the stage that I was starting to actually stutter because I used to be very afraid of the words that I had to say. And the only way I could do it was actually if I sang it through. Because I had to basically push it out and music allows a continuity to happen. So for people that, that struggle with speech, uh, impediments. Uh, music is a really good way to help uh, translate that. So, but coming back to Turning Point, the second album, everybody was very excited about it. The same team all around this this record, some really great players. Uh, on guitars, it was Moritz Lords, and on the first album, that was like a dream come true. I didn't, couldn't imagine that happening because I've been watching his music videos. I mean, he was like the Steve. The Steve Vai or the Joseph Gerani of South Africa and I, he had videos out and him on the guitar, it was just voicing and, and this dude just like he had blonde hair, spiky and it was just, you know, the six string rays of turning point, earth tones and uh, I think it was Kaleidoscope, yeah, the, all these albums are just phenomenal. Uh, so he's an incredible guitarist, so he happened to be on the record, I, I go into the room and boom, he's there, I'm like, ah! Oh. First thing on the first record, you go in there, you're not really experienced, and this guy's playing on your record, and he's setting up. <laughs> no. So uh, that was the first, the, the first one that hit me uh, for 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 a six, basically. And then it was uh, Denny Lalowit, an amazing, phenomenal human being. Firstly, uh, I believe he's Mauritian born, and he was on the bass guitar. And all these guys had these papers set out and Danny Antle put it all in music and they all put it around them and the minute they just one, two, three, and just what I did on the demo to walk in the room and have a band like that play it and Wally Cullis was on the drums and Danny did the Hammond and oh it was just a phenomenal time. Peter Thwaites on engineering. So it was crazy. It was at Decibel Studios in, I can't remember the, the suburb, but I know it was Janice, but it was crazy, crazy times. Um, singing other people's songs also got me into a bit of trouble. Um, yeah, just, you know, never get involved with people that you are working with. I believe it's it's the golden rule. You know, you got to you know keep it to, stay to the art, I would say. That's 
you know, as we go along, I'll be mentioning my mistakes. Now, what happened with this record, in, the, in, the, in this time, I was getting negotiations of possibly, uh, you know, going overseas and playing a couple of weeks with Petra. And Petra is a Christian band from the, from the 80s, 70s, really. They've been going for a really long time, really cool band. They've got the Grammys and, so, and, and, see, and their Christian music awards. And they have a lot of merit in their ground. They're a very respected band. Uh, I grew up with stuff like that, Bride, White Cross, uh, you know, uh, um, just so, King's X, let's bring it on. I mean, it was such a great time in music. So I grew up with all, all of that, and then I ended up picking up, in this time I ended up picking up Goo Dolls, a boy named Goo. Yeah, because VH1 was playing the song called Name. And I think it was the only acoustic song that they had done in in uh, their whole you know genre of their career and that's what i kind of think that's where they kind of were able to hit radio <clears throat> so in that time i was listening to a lot of mesh music uh second music which it didn't really matter if it had drums guitars bass producer mix engineer power stuff boom i, I mean i used to go to the cd stores and go look at the cd covers smell the covers mm, wow what a nice print this is definitely an import <laughs> and, you know that sort of thing you know like you would, I'd go to the credits and I'd go, oh, Randy Stork makes, oh no, he engineered a beard. Oh, Chris Lord Algae just did the, oh my word, produced the Howard Benson. So, I, I, I mean, I, that was the kind of, I was really infatuated with music. It was, yeah, I, I, I realized that it made me feel good. Now, how about making me and making other people feel good? So, um, so this record, it, it, it had so much. Uh, I think a lot was riding on it for everybody. The label was really excited, um, and unfortunately, I blew it. I I blew it like if you're holding a sandcastle and the water came and took it all the way off the water, and all that's left is like that little. That's exactly what I did. I I went to the record label. I said, listen. I, I need X amount of money to get to Nashville, or at least get to South America, so I can start touring with, or rehearsing with Petra. And uh, it just, it just uh, the, the record label was like, Mike, your, your record's coming out in two weeks. And at that point, I, I kind of can't believe what I did. I, <laughs> I pushed the label so hard. I said, I want it to happen. Uh, and I want an advance. And they were like, Mike, no, the advance that we had from from the success of the previous album, it allowed us to record and do a second record. And it takes at least three records to kind of, you know, uh, get a little momentum going. And I didn't capture all of that. I mean, my mom was very difficult. I mean, she managed everything that was my music career in the beginning. And I, you know, if she, I mean, really, I mean, it was a, an extremely naive time for me to realize that a lot of it was my fault. Um, and also that, you know, it wasn't just myself, you know, I was mismanaged. Um, my mother kept finding the record label every second, like every month for, you know, and it didn't work that way. Sam I worked every twice a year, there was a yearly payout and that, you know, that's how it worked. Paid out the record labels, record labels pay everybody involved and the rest, whatever is happening in the range with the record label publishing company comes to you. That's how it works. I kind of had an idea. Danny started telling me, Mike, your mom is here. Oh. So I was I was young in the middle of all of this. So what I did, it became sour. I became really sour. Uh, the label was telling me to do one thing. My mother was telling me to do another thing. And I just wanted out. <laughs> and, and when I did that, I left home. And it became, it became the story of just a young man losing his head and making very immature decisions. Uh, Put it this way, I blew the deal with Petra. Um, I'm still friends with, with Kevin Brando that I met on the tour of the God Fixation tour. Uh, bottom line is just um, never, you know, never feel that you have. It's music is not a right. Music is a is a privilege, and whatever's been given to you to do something with music, uh, do it with all sincerity and be true to yourself um regard i mean there will be many opportunities uh in life and not everyone is for you or you know in many cases it's that way so the second album can they printed five thousand copies pre-ordered and i just left i dropped the label i left 
and I started, which became my journey of band life. The band called Alma Rose <clears throat> that became a band called Seven Day Story. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, the do's and don'ts. Real music works. If you really work for music, remember this. Um, really uh, value the opportunity and the occasions that are given to you. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on on the uh, on the interwebs. Make sure that you check it out. Real music works. My name is Michael Miranda, and I'm signing out.